Vlogmas Day 16. I feel a little bit like I'm going to a gig in my outfit today. I haven't done any outfits of the day in any of my Vlogmas. I used to always do them in my weekly vlogs. Let's do one today. So this shirt is a plaid shirt from Primark. My t-shirt is a Fall Out Boy baseball tee that I got from the Fall Out Boy pop-up merch store in Camden. Topshop Jamie Jeans and Nike Freeze on my feet for comfort. <laughs> too much because I will get to them. Okay, Marissa says, you always have something going on. How do you organize yourself between work, YouTube, social, blog, etc? Okay, time management is definitely an art that you have to master to get a lot of stuff done and I'm still, you know, in the process of perfecting that but I swear by a to-do list. Every day, generally every Sunday, I'll set out tasks for the week, like the main big things I want to achieve and then every day, in the evening generally I will plan smaller tasks that I need to do the next day so that way when I wake up in the morning I've already got a list of things that I need to do and stuff I can get started on right away and you don't have to think about it too much so yeah the more you plan the better don't just rely on your brain to remember what you have to do write it all down and plan it out think about how much time stuff will take it sounds really boring but honestly it's the only way to get stuff done I think right another one. Oh, this one's a good one before moving to London did you have any other places in mind where you wanted to move I actually wanted to move to Valencia in Spain rather than London because that's where my boyfriend Mark lived just to explain because everyone thinks he's Spanish he's not Spanish he's English him and his family moved to Spain when he was 14 so he's lived there and gone to high school and uni there but now he's moved over to London back to England to live with me which is cool I wanted to move to Valencia but my Spanish wasn't really up to scratch and I thought it would be difficult to get a job there so London seems like a better option I have a passport and I had a job to come to already the company I worked for in New Zealand also had an office here so I was just able to move there which was great so yeah eventually I would love to live in Valencia though maybe one day it's hard walking and talking so much because I walk so quickly and always feel like I sound like I'm out of breath dinner it's already I don't know how it just gets so late in the evenings like the second that I don't leave work at 5 30 like then all the tubes are busy and then the at Notting Hill gate there was like a delay on the district line I had to wait there for like 15 minutes and then I come home and get my vlog live and eat dinner and then before you know it, it is 9 p.m. I really wanted to dye my hair today but I don't think there'll be time I do have a lot of other stuff to get on with I actually have to print a t-shirt order so I'll show you that and also I might do a couple more questions because I didn't get to them all yesterday and I just put day 15 live and just before I put it live I had a tweet from someone called I think I pronounce your name Prismac possibly it's a foreign name so I'm, I don't know the pronunciation but anyway they tweeted me and were like is Vlogmas 15 going up today honestly I can't wait for it because I'd obviously said to everybody that I was going to answer their questions in day 15 but then I felt so bad that I hadn't answered everyone so again, I'm really sorry if you were disappointed by that, but hopefully that little something else that I put in that video was, I don't know, made up for it in some way. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you obviously haven't seen Vlog 15, so you should go watch that. So, some more questions. I'll answer Prismax first. The question is, what is a typical salary for designers in London? I would love it if you could explain in deeper. This is a tough question to answer because, first of all, there are so many different types of design, and also the salary that you get in design depends yet yeah, not only on what type of design you do but also where you are in your career like if you're just starting out you're obviously going to learn it earn less than if you've been doing it for a while and also it depends on what kind of company you work at if it's an agency or if it's a startup if it's like a big corporate or if you're freelancing you know you're gonna 
earn different amounts. I was having to find out though what a normal salary would be like for um, designers in the UK when I was moving over to make sure that I was being paid fairly when my pay was like converted from New Zealand dollars, you know. I'm just going to turn off this dehumidifier because it's really loud. So anyway, I'm going to share a link down below in the description to some handy sites that I found when I was looking. There's this one called Creative Review that sort of charts the salary average and the minimum maximum for different types of design jobs. So there's lots on there like um, even for like art directors, senior designers, junior designers, creative directors. It's really interesting to look at. So I think that will give you a good baseline. Another one about working in the UK, I'm seeing a theme here. Catherine asks, what is the best and worst parts of moving all the way to UK? I'm thinking about moving abroad for work, a work term. Sometimes during university, so I'm wondering what to expect. The worst part about the UK, I think, is getting used to the systems here and just how they're so different from home. Like, things like setting up a bank account and renting a flat are just so much more difficult and annoying here than they are in New Zealand. So things like that were really frustrating. Just in general, I suppose, moving overseas, you kind of have to start your life from scratch again. Luckily, I didn't have to start completely from scratch because I moved over with a job, so that was, yeah, that was awesome. But getting a flat, getting set up with a bank account, all of those things that you've just owned for years in your flat back home that you suddenly have to think about again. So that's the worst part of moving overseas, I suppose, is the getting set up again, when it just sort of feels like you're spending all this money and time doing things that you already had at home. But, but that sounds really negative, and please don't let that put you off moving, because I obviously still think it's worth it. And the best part about moving to the UK for me has, without a doubt, been being closer to Europe and just all the stuff that happens here in London. So much more goes on, you know, stuff happens in London, there's always something going on and it's just a really interesting and exciting place to live. It's also really close to the rest of Europe, so I've been able to travel over to Europe, I've been to Amsterdam, I've been to Slovenia, I've been to Belgium, and then it's also cheaper to travel from here to America as well, so I've also been to the States. So yeah, those are my best and worst parts. Should we do one more question? My hand is dying, but let's give it a try. Scott asks, how do you deal with self-doubt and lack of design confidence, something for my students? This is definitely a tricky one that I struggled with a lot for a long time, and I still do. You know, it's just, I think you're your own worst critic, and you're always going to be really critical of your own work and feel like you're not good enough, especially when you're looking around at your peers. I think that often in design, self-doubt comes in when you don't talk about your work enough. So I would recommend getting into doing more critiques, talking to fellow students about your work, even if you're, you know, unsure of it and you're really shy to show it and you, you know, you don't want them to judge you or anything like that. I promise they won't. Just think, like, you wouldn't judge them if they showed you their work and were, like, obviously really nervous about it and wanted to improve. Really what they're going to do is give you advice to get better and that's just going to help you improve your skills and also help your confidence. It also helps your confidence I think to give critiques as well as receive them because you can you know train your critical eye and look at other people's work and when you're looking really closely at something you m you can pick out the little flaws that you can then give feedback on them to improve but when you just like do a passing glance that's when things can often look like everyone else is perfect and your work is not you know. That's a little tip I suppose. Maybe I should do a longer video on that with some more in-depth like well thought out advice because that was just word vomit so let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that down below in the comments. Okay my computer won't wake up so that is the last question for tonight. I think there's a couple more to go still so I'll answer them in tomorrow's vlog and if you've got any more questions that you feel like asking me for any reason then you can always feel free to tweet me or leave them in the comments. Yeah I'll answer it down there. Now I must get on with printing that t-shirt. <laughs> seeing that little behind the scenes process. Had to print a t-shirt for an order, that first one, and then I had that black crop top that I'd ordered a while ago and just hadn't done anything with yet, so I decided to put that design on it for myself. I think I quite like it, I might take some photos and put it in the store. Just reading through some comments on my last vlog that just went live, a bit late tonight, uh, and someone was saying that they really enjoy hearing about the designy things, so just wanted to give you an update on that project I was working on from home last week and then late yesterday. I got that into build today and I think it's looking good. 
uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. I think, I think it'll be good. It's always hard to know, and there's always more you can do, you know. But sometimes you just got to work to a tight deadline. I'll let you know when it's live because it should be sometime this week. I hope. Now it is time for the alternative Christmas song of the day, and I just need to find it on YouTube. Today's alternative Christmas song is another one by Blink One Eight Two. This time it's actually more about Christmas than it is about Boxing Day, which was, I don't know, day whatever in Vlogmas. This one is called I Won't Be Home For Christmas and it's an older one from them so it's a bit more of their punky vibe and I really like it. It's Christmas time again It's time to be nice to the people you can't stand All year Christmas time 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 Christmas time